And welcome everybody to the second game of the high school high school esports league. My name is Ewan Iatos Reed, and joining me for the second game of the day is uh, Jackson William Pro, and of course a special guest, a special guest that is coming with us tonight as well. Introduce yourself, Zoe. Hi guys, I'm Hilt, and I'm from Sacred Heart Girls College, and I'll be the guest caster for today. Yep, so we do have Willow vs. Oppas today. We have quite the lineup. Uh, it looks to me like a like around about a gold average for this uh for this uh match. So it's gonna be very in interesting. And a huge shout out to uh, High School E League once again for hosting this. All the teachers that have put in the time and effort, and the players that have actually gone out of their way to make these teams and compete today and throughout this tournament for the next twelve weeks. So thank you guys. Before we get in, and we we would just like to give a big shout out to everyone who's made this possible. Exactly. Everyone who has come together to get this, you know, Australia-wide event, because of course, this may be the Western Australia match that we are streaming tonight, but there are Victorian games, Western Australia, uh, Northern Territory games, Tasmania. So this is across the entirety of Australia. So it's a huge event and really excited. It's really happy to see everyone who's getting really into it. So for today, we've got ourselves Wilton Senior High College, High School, apologies, which will be on the left on the blue side for this map. And facing against them is Oppa, the representative from North Lake Senior Campus. Now, Jackson, Zoe, we're seeing in 8.12 a very interesting meta coming across the world. If you look at, look at uh, Korea, for example, we're seeing some interesting strategies coming out. Now, are we going to be seeing anything like that in today's game? Well, to be completely honest, the Banner of Command has been removed, but the ADC items are still, like, just so weak on the ADCs right now, and they need they are going to be changed to 8.13. So until then, we still have a very high chance of these double bruise or bot lanes with a double rail shield for that insane sustain that we're getting. Um, we do, however, tend to have a bit of an interesting top lane matchup because a lot of people have been saying top lane has, didn't get their, uh, their items this patch, but we do have our resident top lane expert, Zoe, in regards to like what what what's top lane looking like at the moment what's really strong in top lane uh top lane's looking pretty interesting it's pretty it's staying pretty normal with the meta a lot of the top laners are changing with the new patch but uh people like fiora and uh jax or malphi or j4 they're looking really good and uh just people who can who aren't going with crit because crit's down this meta and we just really have to get past that Indeed, but we do we do still sometimes see the Storm Razor and champions like Gangplank and Yasuo and stuff like that because it just gives you such an amazing burst on the first hit and it can actually be very good. Um, now we are looking to go in. Well, we do have a quite an interesting lineup in regards to um, in regards to like the summer names, but it does look like we're actually about to get into the pick and ban, ladies and gentlemen. So away we go. Indeed, we're into the first pick and ban and. The things that I'm, the things that we will be expecting to see here uh, is obviously going to be the new new Carthus, for example, and of course Yi Tarek. Two strategies that, I mean, I'm, you're running into them in norms. I've had a few games where I've run into those very strategies in normal games. So I would be a little surprised if, for example, new new and the Tarek actually made their way through this pick and ban, as Zin is going to be the first one to fall. Yep. Battle of the Korean boosting strats. We do have, uh, we do have like they're pretty much just hyper farming one carry in particular. So it's either the Karthus or the Graves or the Yi, and then they just put them with either a Brom, a Tarek, or a Nunu just to boost their ability, uh, just to boost their power in general, and just uh, they can absolutely run away with the game if they get fed enough. So we do look like there might be a missed ban from the side of Oppas. I'm not sure if that's some kind of uh, issue in regards to like the sign in times. It might just be one of those scenarios where they don't know who to ban and they don't want to risk taking away something that they want to end up picking. So it might be that. Or, or Oppa is planning on playing one of those Korean boosting strats that you were saying earlier and they don't want to ban away, you know, something that they might want to pull out. So we'll let's see what it goes as Aurelia taken away as well. Now, Aurelia, and, and we, we both know, Jason, that you've had, we've had a bit of an interesting discussion when it comes to Aurelia and just how versatile she is. So Aurelia is one of those champions that probably needed a nerf this patch but didn't get one. She's got high mobility, she's got high kill potential, good tankiness, and really strong all up. And another OP pick, Kai'Sa. So Kai'Sa with Gwinsu's, we know it's been really strong. So as Zoe was saying before, with lack of crit, uh, with lack of crit items that are good, the odd hit items are really good, as well as these AP kind of builds. So Zoe, what are your thoughts so far on like the Gwinsu's into on hit versus Gwinsu's 
uh, with AP builds, like your Nashra's to the Rabadons versus your Gwyn Twos and Witsend. What are your thoughts on those two builds on your on here ADCs? Uh, I'm thinking that the, especially because Ezreal is such a safe ADC right now, the AP, I think it's going to be good. Like, there's just a lot of things. I feel like there's just a lot of things you can do right now uh, in this meta and how new it is. There's just a lot of options. Indeed, we do see the Evelyn and the Lee Sin taken away as well. So those are two really good early game junglers. Uh, but we do see the Graves getting locked in. Are we going to see the Graves from boosting strat right now? This is something else. And all three boosting strats are completely available. You and do you reckon we're going to see something here? Um, I would be a little upset if we didn't see one of because because I mentioned the two strats, and the third one is, of course, the Graves and Brahman. I'd be very surprised if they weren't picked. But we've got to remember that this isn't, you know, LCK levels of players. These guys, in the time that they had, are probably not going to say, hey, let's disregard our personal play styles. Yeah, so they're not going for that. They're going for their personal play styles rather than these quote unquote Korean boosting strats, as we're seeing Darius Nocturne locked in. And Lucian, he did get through. And anyone who knows how I play knows that um, in solo queue, I've got a killer combo with a good friend of mine Nocturne, Galio, and Gage. Nocturne, they're all grouped together, goes into a priority target, and then Galio just follows up, keeps Nocturne alive knocks them all up because they're grouping together so they can see each other. So if they pick up the Gallo, there's an amazing engage pro six, but lacks a bit of that early kind of gank potential that Graves will bring and that fighting potential Graves will bring. Lucian ADC, absolutely powerful. But we might just see the Darius Alistair bot lane. This might just be Oh, the Yasuo comes in. So we're seeing flexes out of Oppa. Darius is technically a flex pick. Yasuo is technically a flex pick. So I really like Oppa. They're definitely playing with fire a little bit. Well, that's the thing. As of this meta, Darius Yasuo can be flexing all three top, mid, and ADC. Now, Zoe, it's it's as as someone who plays a lot of top lane. What's Darius like? What's Darius and Yasuo like in that top lane right now? Darius is looking pretty interesting because of his just how versatile he is and how he can just totally destroy you with his uh, high AD. I just oh, it's looking like I said. It's just the meta and top right now it's kind of staying the same as before the new patch hasn't really changed a lot now that banner of command has gone he's not really pushing as much he's just really obnoxious i think D darius is just super obnoxious and the yeah. lane dominant oh sorry lane dominant style is coming out of that so as I did, also talk about dominance i was want to talk about lucian thresh the wife steel bot lane has not been a thing for so long and i'm really excited to see if wife steel come back into uh, not necessarily the meta but come back into play Sorry, when you say wife steal, I'm just thinking bloodthirster for some reason, and that sounds so bad because you just think about like where the blood came from. Jackson. <laughs> Jackson. I okay. do see the Tarek <laughs> man as well. So there is no Yi Tarek boosting strat today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but we do have the uh, Nocturne and the Darius getting ready to uh, uh, the Nocturne and Yasuo actually. That is a great diving potential. The Darius is a really good frontliner, so you pretty much have your frontline diving potential. And an Ash Hover. So Ash would be really good with this kind of heavy mm. engage with the ultimate. This is a great pick potential from the side of Oppers. Definitely. So I'm really excited to see the fight. Ash, we have seen Ash as like one of the few AD carries to survive purely because of that ultimate. She's able to force the engages and she's relatively safe in lane. She can stay back and launch out the volleys if she's in a lot of trouble. So it definitely can work. I'm interested to see what they lock in here. But if they lock in Fiora. Oh boy, if that is a Darius versus Fiora top lane, things just got really snowball-y really quickly. Mm -hmm. So right now in this casting team, we have two top lane mains and a top main secondary. So this top lane is going to be very interesting for all of us to analyze. But unfortunately, there's two champs that I don't play. <laughs> and this is, Ewan's, this is Ewan and Zoe's territory right now. But we do have Lissandra mid. So Lissandra... Great engage. So they do have the split push pressure as well as the four man death ball of the Graves, Lissandra, Lucian, and Thresh with great pick potential and great engage. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. But the Morgana is a great counter pick into the Thresh bot lane, allowing them just to stay safe and use Ash's superior range on the Lucian. So it's actually quite interesting how they've actually like seen this meta and be like, hey, we can match your meta and um, let's, let's one up you with a counter. So it would be quite interesting how this goes, but the Ash is going to like be practically useless to this late game. Exactly. When you look at late game, I think to myself, Yasuo, if he can get a knockup, because there's not a whole lot of knockups on the side of Oppa, if he can get a knockup, he can destroy 
Willow. He can get on top of the Lucian, he can get on top of the Lissandra, and they need to be perfect with their lockdown, otherwise Yasuo just kills them. Failing that, Darius is still a high damage threat. So, and even the Nocturne can assassinate squishies such as Lucian and Graves come the later games, assuming he goes for the high damage on hit build. So, it's it can definitely work for Opa. The issue is, I look at their lineup, and I just see nothing but AD. Yeah, Morgana mm -hmm. is an AP champion, but there's a lot of AD, and I just worry, and I will be asking uh, Zoe for you this one, if we get to the later game, is this lack of ability power damage really going to become an issue for Opa? I, you know what, I think both sides are kind of lacking AP. The Both of them don't really have strong AP in there. Uh, I'm just thinking, I'm just really focused on the top and how much of a skill matchup uh, the Fiora and Darius is going to be. It's going to be very interesting to see. Because Darius has a lot of kill pressure, but he can be really dependent on jungle. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Nocturne does. Indeed, but one of the things to note with um, this heavy AD lineup is it's not actually that big a deal, because the only real tank, and even then he's just a support tank, is the Thresh. The Fiora doesn't build tanky stats, Graves builds a little bit of health with the Black Cleaver, Lissandra might build a Zonya's, and the Lucian just builds damage, so it's actually... The full AD lineup isn't actually being... Um, uh, it's not actually going to hurt them too much, to be honest. Maybe if they'd gone for something like a Shen, or if they'd gone for something like a Malphite, or even a Ramus, this might be absolutely disastrous. But right now, it doesn't actually have looked to be a problem for this late game scaling that Oppers might, uh, that Oppers will have with this full AD comp. Exactly. So we'll have to see how that ends up going. We are, of course, in our spectator delay. So unfortunately, we will be looking at these teams. We can look at the summoner spells and. Really, there's nothing overly out of the ordinary here. Now, Jackson, we have talked about briefly teleport on AD carries for lane fresh. And neither of these neither of these AD carries on Genji or Peanut have opted to go for this teleport lane pressure style. Now, is that going to you know, make their 2v2 more prevalent, or is that more of a thing of being, hey, we're not so worried about the macro game in terms of in terms of lane pressure and prioritization over the micro game of we can outplay you and get our advantages from there? Well, it's because ADC is a lot weaker of a lane, so you don't have to be as lane dominant anymore. So that's why the TP came in, because like, oh, okay, cool, we're not exactly getting the kill pressure, we can just TP back to lane, we can get our item spike, it's a slower lane. But the one issue I'm having with these bot lane teams is Morgana and Thresh both have a lot of pick potential, and Lucian has a lot of all-in potential, and Ash has some decent poke, even at si and at 6 has a lot of all-in potential. So neither ha the Thresh nor the Morgana has gone for the Ignite, which is what I find really peculiar, because... The exhaust is good against assassins specifically, so I can see why you'd pick it up on Thresh for Yasuo and Nocturne, but it just loses you so much lane priority as exhaust is so weak compared to the Ignite nowadays. Um, as for, we got the standard TP in the top lane because top lane is such a long lane and it's so snowballing. So if you like die once, they can get tower very quickly post five minutes because that tower protection is down. Exactly, and of all lanes, you don't want to be letting the top lane snowball. If Darius gets ahead, I think everybody has experienced what happens when the enemy Darius gets ahead, flash Q or W, and then just dunks you and just hates all of your health. So you don't want to let the Darius get it. On the other side, Fiora, not as much as it. You look at a Fiora and think, yeah, if, she's just ahead, if Fiora gets ahead, that is a nightmare to deal with. So I feel like, if nothing else, both of these junglers should maybe be looking on the top side to either initiate their snowball or prevent the snowball coming from the opposite side more than anything else. You sound like you're speaking from experience there, Yathos. Look, not back in a season, if everyone remembers season five, I believe, uh, you know, Riv, uh, this was right as the Juggernauts were released. So Darius had just been updated. Fiora had just been updated. And the top lane meta from the quarterfinals to the grand finals of Worlds was Riven, Hecarim, Darius, Fiora, and that's all you would run into in solo queue. And let's just say, as someone who played Jax, I had a very rough season. Don't forget the uh, Mordecai as a bot lane there. Oh no, please no! I'm I'm, I'm having horrible flashbacks of Mordecai as a bot. Let's let's not talk about uh, the things that scar our nightmares, Jackson. Let's 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 have some happy thoughts, please. But anyway, <laughs> getting into the game right now, we do have Willow Andy on Fiora up against Korea in on Darius in the top lane. We have Vision on Graves against Solera Good Fisher Bird versus on Nocturne in the jungle. We have the Clowns on Lasanja versus Akashi on Yasuo in the mid. We have and we have Peanut Butt at Window Seven. On Lucian and Thresh, the wife still lane up against the Gemoji false, uh, false up 
Ash Morgana, I will make you get an AFK warning lane. So guys, get ready. We are about to get in this game right now. Indeed, and I'm looking at these lineups, and you just think to yourself, if anyone is going to pull a level, like, if either of these teams going to try and pull off a level one strategy, you've got the Morgana who, if he does get the Dark Finding, is great setup for the rest of Oppa to follow it up. Is there going to be some sort of level one uh, shenanigans going on in this early phase? Uh, there quite possibly is, um, but it really depends on like what the strengths of the uh, level ones. Like it's it's it, neither neither side aside from the th uh, the Thresh and Morgana actually do have a lot of CC, so a lot of pick potential for this early bit. Um, but one thing I'm really wondering that's really on my mind is how do you pronounce that Nocturne's IGN? Zoe, do you want to give it a shot? Uh, Pedigixamica. Yep. This is this is one of the times where you ask yourself, how did you get that username? Is this I think he just smashed his forehead on the keyboard. One thing I'm really one thing I'm really really worrying about though is you said uh, an M when you're pronouncing it, and uh, there's no M in his name. Oh uh, ward. Uh, but yeah, they are they, this this invade has been caught out. They are standing on a ward, so they know what's happening here. They might just go for a counter inv invade. But yeah, it looks like they're they're back off and just going for a counter invade right now. It's a bit unfortunate that they got caught out by that war. This is like, yes, it's going for the level one strat, and they know you're here. We see, if you look on the top side, Willow Andy has put a ward up on the top side of the map, so they've got vision, and they they can't really walk into this. Sort of, I really like vision here. Look, he's going to the top side. He says, "Hey, I'm not risking them being in my jungle." A lot of players refuse to give up their buffs when it comes to like jungling. They're like, "No, I'm being stubborn. I'm taking my buff, whether they like it or not." I like Will Will ad Willow's adaptation, being like, "No, we're not going to risk face checking you. We're simply going to go uh, vertical jungling." I'm liking that. If you notice, Fiora's taken uh, grasp of the Undying. It's, I think that Ooh. Darius is going to need to take a long trade because Fiora's probably looking for poke and scale. So grass because it gives you permanent health every time you pop it, probably Whoa! Korea really wanted that red buff, unfortunately. The flash decimate only resulted in the decimation of both his flash and his confidence. And of course, what that does is it sets Korea so far behind. He loses the farm uh he loses the farm lead, he uh loses his flash, so now he has to play this lane very safe because if Fiora gets in a vital prox and goes for the all in, it's gonna be great, but uh of course, if you're actually running the uh, the Grasby and dying over something like Kleptomancy, so I can't actually get quite the lead that he'd be hoping for. Maybe so, but as Zoe said before, it's for the sustain more than anything. Darius doesn't want to go. Oh, actually, we're going to fight in the bottom. Level two has been hit first. First off, is simply going to fall down. No, the flash and the heal coming out of Jamoji, managing to save the life was his support. But level two being hit on the side of Will Lol, really good job there to force the fight. Indeed, and of course, it does mean that uh, the. It does mean that the heal and the flash are down from the Ash and the Morgana. So now they have to play this very safe, especially because their Thresh has so much pick potential and Lucian has so much burst damage. So this is two lanes already for um, uh, Oppa that is actually quite disadvantageous. Uh oh. Oh no. Nocturne is trying to go for an invade to try and do vertical jungling. Unfortunately, he's a little too slow. He will be burning the flash, but the Lissandra is waiting for him. They knew it was coming. The spell shield a little bit late. Unfortunately, the hook does not connect, but Clowns. Doesn't look like he's actually gonna be able to finish off the kill, so Yeah, so it's it's that is that is a decent steal from the Nocturne, but of course he has blown the flash, he it did get out alive, and of course this does mean that he can just uh just chill out for a bit. But in this top lane, it does look like the Darius, the lane will he's actually struggling, he's being pushed in, allowing for the Fiora to roam. So this aggressive vision is good because it, it can it can track the enemy jungler. And it's it's really uh, up in this top lane island. As Zoe would always would know too well, it's very very important to make sure you don't get ganked. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's what what ganking angles would the Nocturne be looking for? Well, the thing is, uh, the fact that she's so pushed up right now, they can really give Nocturne the chance to go in through the river. But honestly, I'm more worried about the Darius and the fact that he is he has no flash and is immobile. So Graves needs to take advantage of that. But neither of them have, really have reliable CC. But of course, right there, we do see the sustain with the Darius. He has got the door and shield, and he's actually full health now, even without uh, even without using his pot. So really good there. And but what's how's how's the fact that the Nocturnes got very bad ganking pre six? Like how's that going to affect Team Oppa now? Are they going to still try and force a gank with their Nocturne, or are they going to try and like just power farm up to level six? What do you what what's what's the cause of action here, Zoe? 
Oh, it's really hard to say right now. I'm not really sure. I feel like the Lissandra is going to need help from the Nocturne. Uh, or the Lucian, but I don't know. But of course, it does appear the Nocturne might just be uh, showing some presence in the mid lane because Yasuo was getting pushed in. And uh, it does allow no Yasuo just like stay safe a bit. He is getting bullied out quite hard by this range matchup. But as we all know, good Yasuo, good Yasuo will go 0 10 before they actually do something well. Uh, <laughs> I'm not salty at all, I swear. Yeah, no one believes that one, Jackson. <laughs> Says you and the king are salty on Yasuo. I've seen uh, your <laughs> games against Yasuo, my friend. Look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say what I normally say with Yasuo. Let's just say he's got a lot of mobility for a champion that has uh, no mana. Let's just let's just say that and uh, move on until until Akashi gets online, eh? Oh, indeed. But we do have the Graves now. No, Graves, Graves actually like doing a decent job of just being able to um, do a lot of work and apply a lot of pressure. Um, and but he actually hasn't backed yet, so he's he's looking to make a play down bot, but he can't he can't sell out the Drake yet. He doesn't have the items. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of ganking potential here because none of the waves really prep for it, um, except the top lane where it's on the other side. Oh. Ooh, a little bit of fight in the top lane, Korea and Andy going at it, but Andy doesn't get access to the proc, he wasn't able to dive on top, so the fact that this Darius almost has his flash back up, considering the level 1, and hasn't been ganked is really good for the side of Oppa, you feel. Yeah, so they blew the flash, uh, he blew the flash early, and they haven't capitalized on this, so the Grace has actually just been power farming right now, he's cleared out his entire jungle, and he still hasn't backed yet, he's at 34 CS, and he hasn't ganked, he hasn't backed, and it's, he's, uh, the Nocturne is actually caught up in farm, and the Nocturne wants to power farm to level 6, so... Yeah, slur... Slur gig kiffer pitch... Olic? It's actually, like, not having an issue with this. Ooh, Andy, once again, level 6 on both sides, the Grand Challenge comes out. Can Korea fight against the duels? It doesn't look like it, but there might be enough stacks. The dunk is up and available, and... Decide not to go for it, which might be the best option, but it's still an Islander. And neither jungler has really decided to give their top laner some love. Indeed, and the flash is up for the Darius now, so it's like that earlier uh, flash, like, blow, uh, isn't actually like that big, big of an issue. Also, the Fioro does, I believe, outscale the Darius in the 1v1 if he had the skill for it. So, it's. This is advantageous for Fioro just for it to, like, go on longer, but we shall see as things go on. The Nocturne has already backed for his full jungle item, whereas the Graves have gone for a Coalfield Hammer. So it's going to be a question of, like, Nocturne still power farming as opposed to the Graves just, like, getting more stats in general. I'm interested, do you guys think that Fiora will build Tabby or Mercs? Or do you reckon, or do you think, uh, or do you know if Darius is going to build Trinity Force or Black Cleaver? So funnily enough, with the um, whole Black Cleaver uh, Trinity Force <laughs> argument, um, ever since Conqueror came out, if the top laner takes the Conqueror, they don't actually have to go for the Black Cleaver anymore. Um, and even because Fiora doesn't build a lot of tanky stats, you don't need to go for that Black Cleaver to shred the armor, because you do the true damage, you don't have to shred the armor anymore, so you can just go for the stronger uh, Triforce, which gives you so much more damage because the uh, spell uh, oh, Spellblade procs. So, um, I, I definitely would recommend the Triforce in this matchup, but Black Cleaver does give you more uh, health stat. Fiora definitely needs to be careful because she can't take prolonged trades with Darius if she doesn't have her ult. Exactly, and of course we do have the Darius. Darius has an inconceivable amount of sustain, especially when it's in a 2v1 or a 3v1, because he's got his Q, which does so much, his uh, Decimate, which has so much damage as well as sustain for himself. He can heal up to 36% of his max health, I believe, which is absolute insanity, especially when he gets a Spirit Versailles or something like that, and he can just heal for days. But of course, the Fiora has actually got a 23 CS lead, which is actually quite disastrous for the um, Darius up at the top end. It's a little bit worrying because it was mentioned earlier the fact that this is a skill matchup when you get to the later phase. Fiora can outplay the Darius. She can repost the Q, she can repost the ultimate and really work her way around it. Darius, uh, if, if it comes to the later stages of the game, if Fiora has herself half an item to even a full item ahead of this Darius, if she gets a long lane, Korea. Oh my god, they're going on the bot side! Unfortunately, that dark binding was everything they were looking for! And lovely paranoia coming out, it's gonna make them paranoid for the rest of the game, but they turn it around! The Fallen Angel falls once again, and... Oh, that was a really good pick off for Offer, but Will Willow, really good job to catch the overextending. Meanwhile, in the top side, it looks like Korea and Will Andy will be duking it out once again. A lot of fighting between these two, but... Don't, neither do you really seem to be committing for a proper kill. 
You in sync? 933? 934? Uh, 935? Yeah, I'm like half a second behind. No worries. <laughs> Apologies. Sorry guys, I thought we had a bit of a time delay between them, but yeah, it looks like we're fine. But the Lissandra! Oh my lord, the frozen tomb coming in, but it will not be the tomb that Yasuo will rest in. Lovely sidestep for the tornado, one more auto attack will surely be enough. The flash frost takes him out. That clowns, that sidestep to dodge the tornado was beautiful. And to clowns has come out of the sewer with a smile on his face and decimated no. this Yasuo. This Yasuo is wonder is hoping he can float too, but he cannot in these icy waters. Uh, Pennywise is here to play, ladies and gentlemen. So we we'll have to see how much, see how many friends Pennywise makes this game. As really good job, of it. and that's a bit of a worry that they're not like bottom lanes or even mid lane feels like it is in the advantage, or at least the tempo advantage of clowns. Do you think Zoe that will will, will can be able to use his momentum to get to get more online? Actually, I have to come back to that later. As oh, Korea's in a lot of trouble. It's a one v two. Can he outplay it? The decimate coming out as well as the dunk for Korea. Oh my God, no! The grand challenge was not blocked in time, and it wears out. And unfortunately. Without the heal, Willow does not make it, and he becomes yet another tree that falls in the woods. When Darius hits his out of Q circle, he just, it, he wins the fight, it's just how it works. Pretty much, that heal that he gets, those stacks that he gets, he wins these extended trades, being able to get so much bleed damage, so much true damage, especially with the Conqueror getting, being able to like do, uh, get past any resistances you may have. The uh, Fiora has that Tabe, but the Tabe isn't enough to stop all this bleed damage and the true damage. So Conqueror has, has literally been a game changer in this top lane, and it's completely changed the landscape of what we see up here. Exactly, and we see the Stinger coming out of the Darius, so this is going to be, as you were mentioning, bro, the Trinity Force that comes out of uh, Champions who build Conqueror. So really, it's going to be inside an issue, because the scaling, like I said before, it can be favored inside of Fiora, but it comes down to mechanics. And the, the Trinity Force simply means that if Willow is not able to get the Grand Challenge procs off quick enough to get the heal, the, Darius is going to be swinging his axe enough, quick enough, that it will be enough for a kill. And right now, it's, it does appear that it's it's just going to be like a... It's actually been a... Once again, it's been slow games today. The, today's games have actually been quite equal in the fact that there's been no like massive winner, but of course the Fiora is going in again. And indeed, there are pots coming out, but I don't know how much I can really get a force this, so it looks a bit like just a top lane trade. So, if everyone does play top lane, this is what happens. It's a lot of trading where, yeah, sure, the, the Hemo play, the Hemo play, bleh, that's the wrong, that's the wrong champion. The passive of the Darius does indeed go off, but they're not really going to fu fully commit to the fight. And I'm seeing a, oh, sorry? <laughs> uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, blood, but I'm not seeing the Hemo playing, my friend. But yes, go on, Zoe. Uh, Darius building Stinger is going to help him play a passive stacks, and because of Darius's uh, W auto attack reset on Sheen, it's going to do insane damage. Indeed, especially with that Spellblade being able to do so much damage, and because Darius's base AD is extremely high, that just makes this Triforce all the more like dangerous because it it's pretty much is three attacks just stacked on each other with that base AD. So really, really good from the Darius there. But it Ooh. does. It does look like the two. If we look at the actual two team uh -oh. comps. Oh no. Uh oh. There's going to be a dive. If they do not pull this stuff properly, Darius is going to get so behind the grand challenge coming out. Korea is swinging that axe, but is it going to be enough? No, it is not. Collateral damage takes down the only target intended. But of course, right there, we oh. have seen. <laughs> we have seen that Korea is not as good as the high school E League, ladies and gentlemen. So, therefore, guys, OCE best server in the world. 100%. Just guaranteed right there. Has science gone too far? Has <laughs> science gone too far in D lane? Science went a bit too far when we saw Aatrox in Darius in an LCK game on the same team. So, looks like Nocturne may want to try to get a bit of vengeance and the teleport coming in. Paranoia is up and available, so they can really try and force his vision. Lovely sidestep, the spell shield coming out, but it does not look like it's going to be enough. And they cheer off to disengage, which honestly with Korea having no flash might be the best option here. Oh, the oh, sorry. oh my god, that was a lovely hook. We were seeing the camera jump left, right, and center, but it looks like Himoji is in a lot of trouble. The Earth Lucian is online with that Essence Reaver that's coming, coming out, and it is not enough. Yes, it is coming up. And Mama, move one for one trade in the middle. Mama, false love is taken out by the Warden himself. That the soul of the fallen angel will forever be trapped inside that lantern, and Vision Darius juking it out in the jungle. Whew. Indeed, and there we have it. We do have, uh, we have Vision just being on hold of the Darius. We do have the pretty much just pressure in all lanes continuously for the side of Will, and it's Alpa is struggling quite handily there, 3,000 gold down at 14 minutes, it's 6 to 3, and it looks like first tower is going to go down for the side of uh, Willow. 
it's pro quite problematic, to be honest. And it, there it falls, and we look at the gold. They're sitting at 4k gold advantage with the Infernal Dragon at 14 minutes, and it's not exactly looking pretty for the side of Opa, and what I feel like Will Lol could do is they could probably maybe swap their lanes around, throw their bottom lane top, their top lane bottom, and just seeing more Juki in the top side, like, is that what we're thinking they might be going, Jackson? Oh, indeed, because if they get, cause, considering the next uh, objective is the Rift Herald, that means they can threaten with the pressure in top lane, get the top lane tower, and organize get the Rift Herald so they can help push down this middle tower as well. So, really good uh, potential right there, but of course it does look like... Oh, Korea, the Grand Challenge coming out, but the Nocturne comes in! Is it gonna be enough? Korea running for his life, and looks like Willow Andy is trying to commit to the kill. The Dunk coming out, but it is Nizlop! Yes, it is! Korea manages to pick it up. Willow went a little bit too far. The one thing I hate so far about this team comp is that the Nocturne is everywhere, so I'm continually trying to pronounce how his name is properly, and I'm about to give up. I reckon it's yours to try to pronounce it. Just, just say Nocturne at this point, because like, no, 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 Say it. Is, is it the same thing you tried to do? Yeah, you had to do it. We've all had to do it. Slash Gav Flav How many Fs were in that, man? There's only like <laughs> one F. Look, I, I already can't pronounce my THs and my Fs properly. Don't get me to try and pronounce some a, a headbang on the keyboard, please. There was one F to pronounce that. <laughs> How is that a problem for you? Look, pronouncing stuff in the one language I know has always been a problem for me. This is nothing I'm familiar. So, it looks like it looks like getting away from my inability to pronounce stuff. It looks like they will be getting on the mid lane turret, which is the last out of tier turret left minus the top, and it's getting super low. Indeed, and they actually did get that down, and so with the top lane tower really low, uh, drag is almost up, rift is almost up. They can keep the Fuhrer up there in the top lane, keep pressuring in that lane, because he is winning the 1v1 if Nocturne doesn't come up. So they can continue. So they can pressure the Rift Herald and the Dragon at the same time while maintaining map pressure. So this is really good for them. They've got the Fury ahead. They've got uh, they've got themselves ahead. They're five thousand gold in the lead, and it's it's definitely it's it's does look like it's going to be another Infernal Drake up in five seconds as well. So even more damage for them. There's quite a big CS lead in uh, the left side, and there's also a large gold. Uh, lead as well, I guess. I'm really interested to see this Fiora and how hard it's going to be able to peel her off of Ash without Morgana queuing. It'll be very interesting. Oh my god, they're going in! The flash over from the Nox and the Paranoia is not up yet, just so... It looks like they went for a bit of a fight, Peanut trying to get in There we go. Meanwhile, on the top side, the Darius dumps down the Fiora. Meanwhile, it looks like the Warden is locked out. Clown's being into the back line, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Multiple members are alive, but the last breath wasn't triggered. Ashkashi couldn't get a good knock up, and now Peanut's going to take him out. The Exhaust coming out a little bit too late, and unfortunately, False Love, you will be falling down a double kill to the Purifier. And once again, Yasuo is trying to float, but he cannot. He's being drowned by Pennywise right now. And of course, there is the Infernal Drake as well. So that's so much extra damage. I believe that's actually 16% AD and AP for the side of Willow. So they are definitely decimating. However, the Darius with the 1v1 over the Fiora with the uh, Conqueror and almost the full Triforce right now. So this is getting quite dangerous. Fiora is rushing the Triforce as well. But unfortunately, it's it's... He can't win these extended trades because he's got Graspian dying as opposed to the Darius's Conqueror. So, this might be a problem for Fiora in the long run, especially because Darius is doing so well. Indeed, so I'll have to see how it goes, but looking on the top lane, I mean, it is a 10-ish CS advantage in the paper, but if you look at the gold values, Darius is only up 100 gold over the Fiora. So, yeah, sure, Fiora at 0-3 doesn't look exactly pretty, but the gold is about even, so it's not even that Fiora is behind her opposite number anymore. Well, it's one of those things where it's like if, even though she's behind, even though she's not technically behind in gold, the gold value of her items, she's only got a sheen as opposed to a full Triforce from the Darius, and that alone is such huge power spike for the Darius, and is going to definitely be advantage. But of course, Ooh, Willow and Akashi coming in, the paranoia coming in, and this is constantly top lane. You don't feel Willow is hella paranoid right now. Is it a one versus three? I don't know if he's gonna turn this around. The last breath coming in, he will take him out. Willow trying to avenge his top lane, but enough. It looks like the rest of the team is coming in here. Korea will eventually fall down. Vision taking himself out. One and it looks like Clowns is here as well. He does not have flash available, so he may not. I don't think he's gonna be able to get Frozen Tomb onto Akashi or uh, keyboard mashing. So. It looks like they will just take the kill on Korea versus Willow, so a one-for-one one trade at the end of the day. 
one for one, and a tower as well picked up on the back of that. And now they can evade this entire topside jungle, and the Ash is just getting free farm on the bot side. So this is what they're doing. They're trying to um, relinquish objectives so they can get one of their carries on board. And this is quite problematic with the new crit ADCs. Ash has only got a zeal. He's got the essence reaver, but it's not going to be that great with um, Ash's cooldowns. He actually doesn't have the crit. It's going to take him literally three items for him to actually get on board with the uh, with probably the Runa's hurricane and uh, the IE. So it's going to be it's it's this is definitely not looking good for the side of our Oppa. Exactly. Ash's range late game completely outscales Lucian, but the issue is going to get. Oh my Lucian, little 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 <laughs> oh my lord, that was utterly brutal. This is the really good clowns doing his best. So it's a two for one trade at the end of the day. I mean, I love the aggression from Mopper, but you are too far behind. You're nearly 10k gold in the disadvantage. You've got to stop forcing plays like this. Indeed, and this does look like it's going to be an inhibitor tower, possibly inhibitor as well. Turning around to False Love. Oh no. Oh, okay, you get the Soul Shackles coming up from False Love, but unfortunately, the love that go the love that's coming around there is the love of death as he folds for the fourth time this game, and the inhibitor will go down as well. So, Opa is in a lot of trouble right now. It could be the love of death or the False Love of life, my friend. Really? <laughs> no comment? Really? <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna let that one sink out to be honest with you, man. We'll, we'll, we'll let the audience decide uh, how how they should take that one. So, it looks like... I mean, if you look at the side of Will, Will Lorna, they are 10k gold advantage. What do you think the next objective is for them? Are they gonna look at are they gonna look at the Baron now that it's up and available? Or are they gonna try and siege one of the, the last outer tier turret for the side of Offer? It's very difficult because their split pusher in the side of the Fiora is... I don't think he's actually able to 1v1 the Darius at the moment because he doesn't have the Triforce because Darius does. Uh, they're both got the Ninja Tabai. So even though he's just picked up the, he has picked up the Triforce now, but with the Darius Conqueror, it might be problematic for the um for the uh Darius oh for the Fiora to actually pick up the Darius. But of course it does look like there's a pick here. Uh-oh, uh -oh. false love is unfortunately gonna go down the black shield a tad too late, and Windows 7 crashes down the uh of his opposite number of support. And Indeed, and Windows 7, I do believe, was actually quite reliable, or was that Windows... Was that Windows XP? It was Windows XP was quite reliable. Windows 7 was a bit of a... what the hell? Windows 8 was quite possible, though. So it's... <laughs> This Windows 7 is very reliable. He's been hitting death sentence after death sentence, play after play. So, say what you want about the operating system, but this player is on point today. Indeed, and now they can uh, now they've got full control of the top side of the map. They've got most of vision control as well. Red side has only got wards on the bottom side of the map, and it's it's not the map that they need to be playing around now. But Fiora, it might just be going down here. Ooh, it looks like it once again, power. No, one versus three. This feels personal. This point, flash over the wall. The upper hand is not enough. Grump takes over the side of this Fiora. The and the entire crystal arrow is once again a Korea. These flash cues are just not working out for the region, unfortunately. While all this has happened, it looks like they've rushed Baron. Indeed, and during that time, they just made their way to Baron. They saw all members were bought, and they decided to back off from the inhibitor tower and just start bursting this down. And it looks like uh, Oppa doesn't see this coming. They finally have vision on it now, but they cannot steal it in time. And that is a free Baron for nothing. Absolutely insane. Zoe, where do they go from here? I think they should just go straight for the the rest of the towers and just get to the Nexus, to be honest. This is... The game, well, game's gonna end yeah, very quickly. Do, do they try and go for, like, the top lane tower or the bot lane tower, do you reckon? Like, cause they, do they try and, like, get the last... Out of, uh, last inner tower, or do, should it just start and make a break for the for those inhibitors and get even more map pressure? Well, it looks like Fiora is going down bot. It could be to get CS, but she could be trying to just quickly split push uh, down bot lane. So I don't know. I feel like they could go either top or bot. Indeed, and it does look like they are. Um, it's. Yasuo is just trying to like get, it, it's, if we look at power spikes right now, so Nocturne does have his lethality item, but the Graves has the Storm Razor now, which is such an amazing spike. Do you have the tri double Triforce top lanes? Um, we got the, uh, oh no. Korea, I think you may be in a little bit of trouble, but if you over chase this, the rest of Will Lol is there, and with Baron up, and, oh, they're doing the 1-4, they put the, they put Clown's top lane with Teleport. Oh, the Entrancel is out, is enough, the Paranoia coming in there, are targeting Windows 7, unfortunately he will crash into the ground through the dung coming out of the Darius, but they have been access to the backline, Willow is trying to do his absolute best, but the Kai the Lucian, the Kai is simply too much, the Earth Lucian takes them out, now we've got a triple kill coming in for him, a quadra kill and a penta kill to surely take majority of off his base. 
And guys, as we can see right there, they have the numbers, they have the Baron buff, they are going for the end right now, and this this is definitely the game. Sure, it's me. the first Nexus turret will fall in a mere matter of seconds, and the second is not long for this while Baron up super minions will take it out, and it looks like Wilton Senior High School will be taking the game over North Lake Senior Campus. Indeed, an absolute decimation right there they did not lose a single tower in that final one they got all the neutral objectives nine towers to zero 20 kills to nine three dragons to nil one baron to nil a rift herald to nil this is absolute destruction as the game went on 25 minute game i think that's honestly the power of essence reaver on lucian <laughs> yeah, that essence reaver on lucian allowed him to use his um uses ultimate and then continually spam his abilities get so many double shots get so many dashes he's impossible to catch he's so strong he does so much and it's just absolutely devastating this is why lucian is so strong in this patch right now why he's such one of is one of the three adcs that are actually relevant exactly so that final fight was absolutely devastating they saw they had a numbers advantage they tried to force the fight but Clowns came in with a teleport, gave plenty of zoning distance so they weren't able to you know, get on top of it. And then Peanut, they couldn't get on top of him. We saw Korea and Jamoji trying to just run him down, but he dumped, he jumped backwards with the Relentless Burst Soup while the Carling was running, got the kill, got the reset, and then finished up the fight with a pentakill. So really well done coming out of Peanut. You know, 11-0-5 coming out of the solution here. Hi hey guys, I'd uh, just like to give a massive, before we leave you all, i just give, like to give a massive uh, shout out to all the teachers, all the organizers, uh, Riot, our special guest commentator, Zoe. Thank you guys all for, uh, all for being here, as well as Yuno, who's been broadcasting this. Um, really good. Um, really, uh, honestly, really good for like uh, everyone who's been involved, put a time, the times out, even the players. Massive shout out to you all. Uh, my name's Jackson Pro Williams. This is Yuno Yatos Reed. And we're joined by the lovely Zoe, uh, X Hilt, I believe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, and just thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Um, and we will be back next week for the next, S uh, for the next uh, well week of uh, high school e league. Wonderful having you guys.